Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's good to be here again teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Happy Sunday to every single person. This is your month of healing and restoration, and it will not pass you by in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Our series of teaching for the month of June has been titled, Can God Still Heal the Sick? And God has laid it heavily on my heart to preach about emotional healing, because many of us are suffering emotionally. Many of us are aware of the scriptures that tells us about physical healing, that tells us by his stripes we are healed. But many of us are not aware that there is some provision within our redemptive package that takes care of our emotional needs. God in no way in the scriptures has told us to suppress our emotions because God himself has emotions. I've tried to show this from scriptures because many times in the Bible, the Bible says that God was jealous. For example, in the books of Exodus chapter 20, when he was giving the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel, especially directly to Moses, he said to Moses that you should have no God except him, for he is a jealous God. And you must understand that sometimes even God gets angry. He regrets his decisions. For example, after he made Saul king, he said, I regretted making Saul king. So God has emotions. Remember, we are made in his image and likeness. So there's nowhere in the scriptures that God tells us all tells us that we need to suppress our emotions and therefore we need to deal with whatever emotional emotional experiences that we have now this morning i would like to look at the subject of anxiety anxiety is something that's been plaguing the the minds of many people and stopped us from being productive the bible says in the books of philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 It says, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request unto the Lord. It said, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So there's provision for your emotional state. Friends, I want to encourage you this morning, and I believe by the power of the word of God, this morning, every form of anxiety in your life shall be destroyed in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you for peace. Thank you for joy. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for your peace that passes on understanding that you've given unto us. Father, I pray as we seek to listen to your word today. Lord, let every form of anxiety in our lives be destroyed. Lord, I pray that your power shall be manifested in our lives and the devil will no longer have a feed day in our minds any longer to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. The Bible tells us not to be anxious for anything, but yet many thoughts occupies our mind. Some of us are worried to death about certain situation of our minds as me physically we are dying from within because we are thinking about things that we cannot change we are worried about how we're going to pay the mortgage we are worried about our children we are worried about tomorrow we are worried about the weather we are worried about things that we have no control over the bible says in the books of matthew 6 verse 27 it said which one of you by worrying can have a day to uh, the length of his life some version says an hour to the length of his life. And it's the truth. Worrying brings nothing but sickness and other demons along with them. Seriously, that's all worrying does. It, present, it prevents us from ever being productive and progressive in whatever we do. A man that is constantly worrying is inviting sickness into his body. There are many causes of worry, or sorry, of anxiety that we can look at. The first one on my list is the feeling of inadequacy. When many of us try to be something we are not, we try and try and try and we fail. Then we feel that we are inadequate. Perhaps you are fulfilling something God has not called you to be. You see, every part of a car is important. But many of us only see the interior, the leather chair, how expensive the leather is, how shiny the interior is, the electronics within the car. But I tell you something, no matter how expensive your car is, as long as it's running on four tires, 
If one of them is missing, the car is going nowhere. So it tells you this, that every part of a car is important. And that's just a physical thing. How much more you that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for? Can you imagine how valuable you are to God? So Jesus always reminds us that we are very valuable to God. We need to stop worrying about things that are so small and inconsequential. Because Christ has given himself up on the cross of Calvary for our life and life in abundance. The birds of the air do not sow, do not reap, but yet your heavenly father still clothes them, still feeds them. Are we not much more valuable than the birds of the air? So we must understand this, that the feeling of inadequacy is nothing but a trick of the enemy to prevent us from focusing on the main thing. You're beautiful the way you are. And believe me, don't worry about whether or not somebody will find you and say you will be Mrs. XYZ or you will be Mr. So, so and so. Because the God that made them, made them too. It is found, it will found in the scriptures in the books of Genesis chapter 2 that it is not good for a man to be alone. And this is God speaking. So therefore, he has made provision for a spouse for you. He knows that you need to eat. So therefore, he has made provision for food for you. I was watching a documentary some time ago about a man who died and visited heaven. He said he got to heaven and then he found a place where there were children. And he asked the Lord, what are, who are these children? He said, those are babies that have been aborted. Aborted. And because they have been aborted, he said, they're here with me. He said, their parents could not trust me to provide for them. So believe me, when God sends a child into your life, perhaps you are pregnant right now. Believe me, he has made provision for what the child will eat. Number two, an attempt to control things we cannot control or change things that we cannot control. There are many situations in our life that are beyond our ability. For example, the day we were born, that was beyond our control. Also, the day we leave the earth is also beyond our control. But many of us always try to control things we cannot control. And we demonstrate unbelief in God's ability to plan our life adequately the way he has planned it. Remember, he has a purpose for our lives. And he has told us not to be anxious for anything. And there's no situation that catches God by, by surprise. You know, oftentimes I make uh, this humorous joke and I say to people, I said, the way we often depict God is as a old man that has long beard. And oftentimes I say, well, if God is that old, believe me, with all the things that are happening in the world, <laughs> if that catches him by surprise, he might have a heart attack. But since God is never caught on our ways, then we can be rest assured that he's in control of all things, no matter how bad it looks. Now, all things work together for the good of them that love Christ. There was the story of a, of a prince and a servant who went, and, who went out to aunt in the bushes one day. They got there, all of a sudden, they were trying to hunt an antelope. When the prince fired his arrow, suddenly one of his fingers was cut off. When he got home in pain, in anguish, and nothing happened to the servant, he was really upset. To make matters worse, the servant began to speak to the prince to pacify him. And he said to him, he said, Prince, don't worry. All things work together for the good of them that love Christ. The prince, the prince was furious. And suddenly he ordered that the servant be thrown inside the jail. The next day after his, his pain has subsided, he still went out to hunt. And suddenly he was captured. But this time around when he was captured by a group of cannibals who actually eat human flesh. Now, one of the rules is that if any part of the captive or the sacrifice, so to say, is missing, then we cannot eat the human being. And suddenly when they examined the prince, they found that one of his fingers was cut off and because of that, he was let go. You see, there's no situation that you're going through that God is not aware of. 
Number two, number three rather now, is our failure to trust God to provide. Which leads on to my previous point. You see, God provides. Is we that are yet to stretch out our hands to take delivery of his provision. For all his works were finished from the foundation of the earth. Ask yourself this question. The world population is increasing yearly. There are people who are complaining about the population of the world exploding beyond, um, uh, beyond measure, so to say. But yet, there's always enough food around the world to feed everybody. If we are all willing to share in proportion. But yet, the world is not growing bigger. I mean, the, the, the width or the diameter or the circumference of the earth is not growing bigger. But yet, there's still space to accommodate every single person that's being born. Even though we are living longer, thank God for good health care. The point I'm trying to get across to us is that we need to learn to trust God to provide for our needs. He is ready to meet all our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 19. So no matter what you're going through, no matter circumstance you're being in, I can assure you it's not as bad as Paul's, who was mistreated, who suffered hardship, who was in shipwreck, who was being beaten, who has, has been beaten. But yet, through all that, he had inner peace and confidence that God, that he trusts, will provide. And he did. So, let your faith not be lacking in God's ability. For he's able to even bring water out of the rock for you. And I can show you in my own personal life that I've experienced sometimes that difficult, but yet I've seen God come through time and time and time again. And I'm a, weak, I'm a living testimony of that. Number four, misplaced priorities. Many of us have misplaced priorities in our lives. The Bible says in books of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Many of us have, we don't understand what we need to focus on. We are focusing on too many things at the same time and then we become anxious. That one of them is not getting done. All we have to do is keep the main thing, the main thing. You see, encouraging the singles one day, I began explaining certain principles I have learned myself. Which is... What is your duty and responsibility? When you apply for a job in any of the institutions around, any role you go for and you apply for a job, one of the things that they give to you is your duty and responsibility and they expect you to fulfill that. Now, once you have fulfilled that, then you can say you're doing extra. Now, when you have not done your duty and responsibility, then you have failed in the employment that you have given unto you, that has been given unto you. What we need to have in our own personal life is understand our roles. Whether we are fathers in the home, mothers in the home, we are priests in the house of God, we must understand our duty and responsibility. This enables us to be able to have our priorities straight. Or those of us that occupy multiple positions, priest, husband, brother, sister, and so on and so forth, whatever you are occupying, you must understand that whatever role you switch into, you must understand the responsibility that you have. And this will help you to have your priorities in place. Number five, trying to live tomorrow today. There's no problem with planning ahead. I have no problem with that. I believe every one of us should plan ahead. But Jesus makes us understand that in the trouble of today is enough for itself. Sufficient is the evil of the day thereof. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You see, the blessings of the Lord, it is the steadfast love of the Lord never see it. They are renewed every morning. So you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Fulfill today. To the best of your ability. Don't overload your calendars. Don't overpressure yourself. 
don't become too um too as i inculcated into the into the future that you forget the present so you must understand that you cannot live tomorrow today. Let's live now, now, and live tomorrow to take care of yourself. If God is still on the throne, then you have nothing to worry about. After all, he's called the Alpha and the Omega. So he knows the beginning from the end. And he knows the end from the beginning. And I can assure you that each morning when you wake up, the Lord's blessings are renewed. Your account is renewed with the love of God, the blessings of God, and the grace to fulfill the activity for that day. So therefore, don't worry. Plan ahead, but don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Now, how do I deal with anxiety? How do I deal with anxiety? We've talked about many situations or how anxiety comes to our life. Then the question is, how do I deal with them to get rid of them out of our lives? The Bible has told us not to be anxious for anything. But in prayer and supplication, make our request known to God with thanksgiving also. Now, the first one is that we need to guide our thought life. Philippians 4 verse 8. I love that scripture so much. It tells us the kind of things we need to think about. Good, lovely, of good report. When your thoughts begin to run a wire. Remember the helmet of salvation that allows you to bring every thought, thought to the captivity of Christ under his knowledge. Change your thinking pattern and then every form of apprehension will be dispelled or dissipated out of your life. Think productive thoughts, not negative ones. Be deliberate in the thoughts that you allow to occupy your mind. Whether in the short run, short run or the long run. Train your mind to think healthy thoughts. Because unhealthy thoughts will lead to other things. And allow the devil a stronghold in your mind. This will stop you from expressing the best of God for your life. Remember, Philippians uh, Proverbs 4 verse 23. It says, as a man thinketh, so is he. The battlefield of the mind. So that your mind will not be exposed to the evil that is going on in the world today. I will recommend, number two, to renew your mind daily with the scriptures. Romans 12 verse 2. The Bible makes us understand that we need to have our mind transformed by the words of God. We must understand that each and every one of us need to read the scriptures. To flush out things that are not in line with God's will and purpose for our lives. What many of us have done is allow the world's thought pattern to be what we think true. And as long as we're doing that, then anxiety will be the order of the day in our lives. If you want peace in your life, then you must allow the world, words of God, which is the will of God, to govern your heart. Refresh your mind with biblical truth daily. The reason why you have a quiet time in the morning or in the evening, whenever it's convenient for you, is because you want to have your mind saturated with the words of God. You see, if your thought life is driven by news, you know, in the media's uh, sources, and everything that you, you think about is governed by things around you, then you will be filled with anxiety and you will filled with things that will bring you or demoralize you. So renew your mind with the scriptures. Number three, turn your anxiety into prayers. I said earlier, and I quote the scripture again, Philippians 4 verse 6. It said, be careful for nothing. In other words, be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Turn your anxiety into prayers. Turn your concerns, your nervous energy, and the things that you're particular about onto God. Let him take care of it. After all, he said, cast all your cares. It is a son. You see, we taking care of our problem does not make us a better Christian than the other person. Because many of us like to brag about the challenges that we are going through. I seem that's a way of ending up some stars before God. Or you trying to carry your problem for yourself. I see that will help you 
you know, get into heaven. By work shall no man prevail. If God has given you access to relieve you of your burden, then why don't you take it, please? Turn your anxiety, your thoughts, the things that worry your mind into prayers. Let that be your prayer point. Pray about them. So you are deliberately putting them at the feet of Jesus and let him deal with it. Obey God and let God worry about his consequences. That's all you have to do. Just obey him. He said, cast all your cares upon him. That's exactly what you do. And simply, that's what you have to do. You see, when many people see the preacher or see a man of God somewhere, they often wonder as if they are superhuman beings. And oftentimes we run to them and ask them, oh, please pray for me. Many of us have simply learned the gospel truth, which simply makes us understand that we don't have to carry the body by ourselves. We can simply give them over to God. He has angels. He has all power. I have no power of my own. So why do I need to worry about it? Friends, we don't have to carry the body any longer. Give it on to Jesus. You don't have to worry any longer. Give it on to Jesus. He's able to carry it all. If he can carry the entire sin of the world on the cross of Calvary, surely your challenge, your worries, your concern, he can carry that too. Number four. Diligently fulfill your responsibility. Earlier I was talking about duties and responsibilities. Many of us sometimes get ourselves in situations that are difficult because we have failed to fulfill our responsibility. Then we are getting scared of the consequences. Once you have done what you're supposed to do, leave the rest to God. Why many of us are often worried, you know, it's like a, like a student who has not studied for an examination and all of a sudden he's fasting and praying and saying lord let the examiner make a mistake when he's marking my paper so that i, I can get a good grade no, no 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 god does not work that way diligently fulfill your responsibility and let god take care of the consequences you see as workers as preachers whatever situation or whatever life or career path we have chosen be diligent he says, see thou a man that is diligent in his works. He said he will not stand before mere men, he will stand before kings. So we need to be very sensitive to the roles and responsibilities. You know, it's unfair to the employer that at the end of the month, we open our hands to receive a salary, but yet we have done no work to deserve it. So be diligent in whatever you do. And then be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit to guide you in our roles to find solutions. Yes, we will encounter challenges on our part. There's nobody that does not encounter challenge. If anybody tells you that, he's lying to you. The only difference is that many of us deal with it differently. What might be a challenge to somebody is a walk in a park for somebody else. Because Jesus clearly said in the books of John 6 verse 33, that in this world you have troubles. So don't let your heart be worried. I have overcome. And surely you will overcome too. As Jesus Christ said. As I begin to close, when you are trouble free, you become more productive. When you are anxiety free, your emotions, your emotions is no longer crippled, and your productive productivity is no longer hindered. Your spiritual growth is exponential. Your prayer life takes a new leave. Your relationship with God and with your fellow man increases. I believe these benefits are something that each and every one of us want to experience in our lives. But we must be free from anxiety. And I'm praying whatever stronghold of the enemy in our minds that the enemy is using to plague us, to rain havoc in our life. Today it is destroyed in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You are set free from every grip of anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You see, God is still in the business of healing his people. And you are his priority because you are his child. None of us who are parents will see our children in pain and then ignore him or her and go to bed. 
God is not wicked. The Bible says, if men who are wicked know how to give good gifts unto their children, how much more your heavenly father. So I want to assure you that your healing is paramount in the house of God. Now, it's time to lay your anxiety at his feet and ask him to take the body from you. He said, let you take my own yoke, for my yoke is easy and is light. Cast all your cares upon me, as he has said. I want you to understand that God, is he means what he says, and he says what he means. So don't allow the world to play what games with you, to stop you from ever enjoying what he has said. I believe in this season, God cares about your life. He cares about your future. As he has said in scripture, it's time to let go. God bless you. In Jesus' precious name. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. I will bless your holy name. We well, thank you because of your faithfulness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for destroying the yoke of anxiety in our lives. And I'm praying, Father, that the words we have heard today shall fall upon a path of ground in our hearts, mingle with faith, and bring forth good fruits in our lives. Lord, no, no longer shall we be plagued by anxiety. We shall be free to serve you in the beauty of holiness. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.